Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and in this episode I will be demonstrating P2 production in EVE Online's planetary interaction. I am logged in on my alt, which has, among his various skills, command center upgrades level 5, which means that my alt can upgrade command centers to the largest possible amount of CPU and power grid. Let me show you how I have a colony set up to do uh, P2 production. So we go to Neocom, Science and Industry, and here I have Hardbot Go 5, one jump out from where I'm docked right now. I'm going to right click and I am going to view in planet mode. And I'll close this window. Now these are my only four permanent structures in my colony. The command center, the launch pad, and two advanced industry facilities that are making coolant. And my launch pad currently still has some electrolytes and water left over from previous P1 production, but it's lower on electrolytes than on water. So, I need to go make some electrolytes, which means I need to pull up ionic solutions, because I happen to remember the production chain. So I'm going to go to the scan tab, and I'm going to click on ionic solutions, and I am going to scroll out and adjust the slider bar is necessary and look around for white spots and oh, there's a couple of them let me adjust the heat map again and take a look around on this particular planet I like chasing down hot spots and I think I have a good system for doing that uh, let's see let me control left click the launch pad, let go of the control button, and that seems to be the best hotspot right now. So this is the shortest path around the globe to get to this hotspot. So I'm going to right click to cancel, go to the build tab, extractor control units, put down a storm extractor control unit, I will plop that down right there, and I will plop down a storage facility next to it. The reason being, in the previous episode, I just linked the extractor control unit directly to the launch pad, but here that would be a very long link. If I tried to just do a direct link between the extractor control unit and the launch pad, where did my launch pad go? There's my launch pad. If I just tried to do a direct link, that's 17,000 kilometers. And that would take 2,600 megawatts. My colony only has 19,000 megawatts, and since I'm at command center upgrades level 5, and I already upgraded the colony to the maximum level, I'm not getting more than 19,000 megawatts out of my command center total. So 2,600 megawatts is significant just for the basic link, but if I wanted to be a direct link between the extractor and the launch pad, I gotta upgrade it. So this might get up to 5,000, uh, 8,000 megawatts. That could be almost a third of my uh, entire power grid right there. So I don't want a single link taking up a third or a half or even more of my power grid. That's just kind of pointless. So what I'm going to... The reason it, it would have to be upgraded that much is because the raw materials take up a lot of volume. So I've got this local storage facility instead and I'm going to create a link between the extractor control unit and the storage facility. And then another link between the storage facility and the launch pad. I'm reasonably confident that the basic that the basic link will suffice between the storage facility and the launch pad. So this link does not need to be upgraded. On the other hand, I'm also reasonably certain that this link will need to be upgraded but I'll figure out how much that needs to be upgraded later. Let me click the Submit button and note that this is 295,000 ISK. I'm going to left-click the extractor and click Survey, because I can't do any surveying uh, unless the extractor has actually been built and the change submitted. I'm going to change the extraction area size to two days. And turn on all 10 extraction heads. And I am going to position the extraction heads over this hot spot. Now 
They can overlap a tiny bit. Try not to let them overlap too much. If any of your extractor heads are overlapping, you will see a negative red percent number. If they're overlapping a slight bit, that's okay. There we go. And this is going to be roughly 18,901 units per hour. So I will click Install Program. And single click, single click, double click. Let me click and drag here. And this, if I try to route it to the storage facility, that's a 239% so that's way over capacity. I gotta double the capacity of the link, then double it again. So, left click the link, click upgrade, click upgrade, left click link again, click upgrade, click upgrade. And let me show you how much power grid this is now using. It's only 95 megawatts. But this link has the capacity to move the raw materials to the storage facility. Now, I want to convert these into P1 products, so I want to do the conversion from ionic solutions to electrolytes right here. That way it takes up less volume, and the standard link all the way over to the launch pad does not need to be upgraded. Now I recall the number of raw materials as being 19,000 units an hour. The, each of these basics can handle 6,000 units an hour. Control, left click, left click, control, left click, left click, control, click, click, control, click, click. Double click, double click, double click, double. No, wait a minute, that's wrong. The product routing, I want to route the products not to the storage facility. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the program's been installed, but the change hasn't been submitted. The products are routed. The products are not routed. The products are now routed to the storage facility as a buffer. Local buffer. From the... S I can't route stuff from the storage facility to the basic industry facilities until I choose a schematic. So, I'm going to handle the schematic first. This first facility, the schematic is already set. Uh, click on Products double-click electrolytes, and I want these electrolytes not to go not just to the storage facility here, but rather to the launch pad. Double-click the launch pad. There we go. Do that three more times. So, double-click the industry, double-click electrolytes, double-click the electrolytes, uh, click and drag till you are looking at your launch pad, Double click the launch pad. Let's return back to the cluster. Double click the facility. Double click the electrolytes to set the schematic. Double click the electrolytes to route them. And let's left click and drag to get back to the launch pad. Double click the launch pad to route the products. One more time. Double click the facility. Double click electrolytes that sets the schematic. Double click electrolytes to tell it to route it. Left click and drag. Double left click the launch pad. Let's return to the cluster. So all four basic industry facilities have now been told to make electrolytes and to route their products back to the launch pad. Now we just need to arrange the inputs. Left click the storage facility, click routes, find ionic solutions incoming, single click, Single click the create route button, double click an industry facility. And let's do that three more times. So single click, uh, oh, there's the incoming single. I double clicked my mistake. Single click, single click, double click. Single click, single click, single click, double click. Single click, single click, single click. Double click. And let me take a look at the routes. I have electrolytes transiting, ionic solutions both incoming and outgoing. So that looks correct. 
I'm going to click Submit. That's another 300,000 ISK because I built three basic industry processors. So total cost, 595,000 ISK to set this up. I'm reasonably confident that the Ionic solutions and therefore electrolytes produced by this cluster will be well more than worth the 600,000 ISK cost. And let's see, total amount will be about 922 units of Ionic solutions. which should turn into 6,100 electrolytes, which, you know what, I'll do the mathematics later. But this should be profitable, at least on the program that I have set up for it. All right. So, after two days, some new electrolytes will have been delivered to the launch pad, about 6,000 electrolytes after which time we will be short on I will be short on water and I will decommission all of those cluster facilities the storage the extractor the four processors I'll decommission those and I will build new ones somewhere else on the planet next to a water hotspot and pull up or rather next to an aqueous liquids hotspot convert that into water send the water to the launch pad so I'm basically alternating back and forth between whichever raw material I need. Right now, and for the next two days, it'll be uh, ionic solutions into electrolytes. The next two days after that, it'll be aqueous liquids into water, and I will alternate back and forth every couple of days. And both the water and the electrolytes will be routed to the advanced industry facility, which will, which always have their products, namely the coolant, routed back to the launch pad. And when I'm ready to pick these up, I will undock in an industrial, travel to Hardbako, warp to the uh, customs office of Hardbako 5, and do a launch. You know what? I may have time left on the video. Let me actually do that now. Uh, exit planet mode, undock. Warp to the Hardbako gate. Let's see, I do have an empty cargo hold. Yes. Alright. Alright, I've skipped ahead to where I just jumped into Hardbako, and I am starting my warp to the customs office in Hardbako. Now that I'm here, I can right click Hardbako 5, view in planet mode, left click launch pad. Click launch, drag the coolant over, there will be an export tax, about 6600 ISK, and export from the planet. The transfer costs do depend upon what it is that you're exporting and how much of it you're exporting. So let me close this, I can exit planet mode. Having the things exported, I can left-click the customs office. Actually, you know what? Let me right-click the customs office, open the hangar, uh, open my own cargo hold, and drag it over. I now have it on board, and I can take it back to Aldrat or wherever and try to sell it. In a future episode, I plan to demonstrate how I use two planets for P3 production because I need to export stuff from one planet and import it to another planet in order to make P3 materials. In the meantime, thank you for watching.